problem solving practice for Snell's law equation. This is section 11.8, um, the questions assigned in the worksheet for week seven. Uh, let's do question two over here. We have a block of amber is placed in water and a laser beam travels from water through the amber. So a ray is traveling from water through amber. Okay, so water is my medium one, uh, amber is medium two. Index of refraction for water will be called N1. Index of refraction for amber will be called N2. Index of refraction, by the way, is the same as refractive index. Okay, um, and we have the two angles given to us. So this is my incident ray, normal. And then you will see that the ray bends. And since the angle of refraction is less than the angle of incidence, you know it's bending towards the normal. So the incident ray makes an angle 35 degrees with the normal and the angle of refraction is 24 degrees. Okay. What is the index of refraction for amber? So this is the question mark. Uh, N1 for water is 1.33. Okay. These values will be given to you in the test question unless um, that is the unknown. Okay, um, so make sure you do write down the given. The unknown is N2. The equation is N1 sine theta i equals N2 sine theta 2. Okay, so we know this, we know this, we don't know this, and we know this. Okay, so dividing both sides by sine of theta 2 sine of theta 2 cancel cancel um, this is of course my solution as well so continuing for the solution um, n2 n2 will be equal to um, this whole expression over here so n1 is 1.33 times sine theta i is 35 degrees divide that by sine theta 2 that is 24 degrees okay. and let's do that on our calculator so 1.33 times sine 35 whatever that is divide that by sine of 24 degrees and that is equal to 1.875 So that is the answer, or the answer given in the worksheet is rounded to two digits, and so that is 1.9. Okay. Uh, this is number two. Um, let's take a look at number three. A red laser beam travels from flint glass into lemon oil. Okay, so boundary goes from flint glass into lemon oil. Okay, so M1, this would be N1 going down to M2 and N2. The angle of incidence is 40. angle of refraction is 44 so since the angle of refraction is greater than the angle of incidence that means the ray is bending away from the normal okay like that so that angle is 44.4 degrees 
what is the refractive index of the lemon oil so this is exactly done like we did here okay i'm just going to quickly show you then i'm not showing you the rearranging and everything it's exactly the same question just with new numbers uh so again index of refraction the second medium is unknown okay uh, the flint glass index of refraction is not given maybe that's what was the confusion uh, but you can always research that okay and that is roughly that is roughly 1.66 like i mentioned these values um, will be given to you in the question okay so n2 will be equal to see this expression that we have and the n1 sine theta i over uh, oh that should have read sine theta r sorry my mistake okay. you can either call theta i theta r or theta 1 theta 2 and so what i meant was theta r over here so sine of theta r okay n1 is 1.66 Times sine theta i is 40 degrees divided by the sine of theta r that is 44.4 degrees. Okay, calculator 1.66 times sine 40 divide that by sine 44.4. And that is equal to 1.5250 okay if I check the answer given to us um, 1.48 okay um, the answer given is 1.48 um, the reason for that is uh, the textbook is going by the flint glass index of fraction value given in the textbook which is this value whereas i found that from the internet so there's going to be some difference uh, but you don't need to worry about this right these values will be given to you in the question uh, as long as you know the procedure uh, you are good okay so for the sign conventions um, for the thin line equation questions uh, let's quickly go over that because there was also a question about that in the Google Doc. Okay, so we are talking about two lenses. Okay, one is a converging lens where the incoming parallel rays will go through the transparent lens and refract so it will bend. But it bends that they all meet up at one point and that point is called is called the focus okay the other type of uh, lens is called the diverging rays um, so when the parallel beams uh, are directed then they do not meet at a point but the rays will go through the lens and they will bend such that all the rays will go away in all different directions, right? But when you backtrace them, um, like this, when you backtrace, they will appear to have originated from one point that is called the virtual focus. You call that virtual focus. Uh, and you denote it with F and an accent on it like this F and a prime that's what it's called so F prime stands for virtual focus and it's a virtual focus because you will see that the rays did not really originate from this point you had to backtrace them right versus the focus for the converging uh, lens they actually meet up at a point they get focused at a point and therefore this is a real focus okay for the questions you will not get any for diverging lens okay no questions for diverging lens you will only get questions for 
converging lens. Okay. So now for the sign conventions, let's talk about the focal length. Okay. It could be positive. It could be negative. Okay. It's positive for converging lens, negative for diverging lens. Okay, so here that focus is negative, but here that focus will be positive. Okay, um, let's talk about DI. It's the same as in mirrors. DI is positive for real images. Okay, real images are always on the other side of lens okay so what that means is say you have a converging lens okay and you have your oh, I actually need a bigger converging lens yeah that's much better okay and let's say uh, your object was a tree okay and then um, on the other side the image will be created um, of that tree but the image is on the other side right so this is what I mean the object is on the left side of the lens and the image is on the right side this is what I mean by the image being on the other side. Uh, so this image is real. Sometimes the image will be created on the same side as the object. And then in that case, it is a virtual image and it's negative. Okay, so it's going to be, DI will be negative for virtual images. So same side. same side of lens as the object okay so an example of that is um, if you uh, have ever seen a, a handheld magnifying lens um, right you place it on the textbook um, to read um, so to read the text um, Okay, let's say you wanted to read this text called textbook you would place the lens on it so this word textbook is your object okay? and when you read um, it appears larger the texts appear larger and those larger texts are your image so the image and the object are both on the same side of the handheld lens so that image is virtual and therefore di will be negative okay so again di is positive for real images di is negative for virtual virtual images sorry about the background noise uh, i can't help it though uh, hi is positive uh, for upright images and it is negative for inverted images and the same thing for magnification as well magnification is positive for upright and negative for inverted images okay now let's apply these sign conventions by solving one of the assigned questions okay let's take a look at this question number five from uh, the worksheet we have a converging lens okay um, so for a converging lens you will see that the focal length is always positive okay okay so since it's a converging lens focal length will be positive okay uh, it produces a real image so you will see here that when images are real 
di is positive so di is going to be positive uh, inverted image so look when images are inverted h i and m these two things are negative so h i if ever this question has to talk about it will be negative and magnification will also be negative okay so these are the four things that could be uh, negative so whenever a question is given you want to identify f d i h i and m as being positive or negative and here here are the rules f is positive for converging negative for diverging d i is positive for real negative for virtual h i positive for upright negative for inverted m positive for upright negative for inverted okay so now that these things have been identified let's take a look Okay. Um, if the object is placed 40 centimeters from the lens, so object is 40 from the lens, so this is your object distance, 40 centimeters. Now you will see that in the sign conventions, we never talked about DO, DO or HO because these will always be positive the distance at which you place the object in front of the lens is always going to be positive an image can be produced inside of the lens or inside of the mirror but you cannot place the object in there so do and ho will always be positive right uh, where is the image produced so do is 40 question is where is the image being produced and so uh, di is unknown okay we also know that the real inverted image is twice the size of the original right that means the magnification is two right so then the question is how do you find out di well we're going to use the same equations that we used in the mirror so m equals h i over h o and that is equal to negative d i oops negative d i over d o okay um we are only going to be using one part of this equation and that part is this one right here so we're going to say m is equal to negative di over do so our equation is m equals negative di over do okay um so i'm going to multiply both sides of the equation with do Doing the same thing on both sides so do cancels with do to give me a one okay so negative di times one is negative di and that is equal to m times do okay m we said is two because the image was twice as large times do is 40 centimeters And so this is equal to 2 times 40, that is 80 centimeters. And this is negative di, but we really need di. So multiplying both sides of the equation with negative 1. So now this negative times negative is going to be a positive. So di, di is equal to negative 80 centimeters. So I want you to take a pause here. Right? Let's say you arrived at this solution. Right? I want you to actually check the validity of your answer. Right? Didn't we say uh, when we were strategizing that di uh, is going to be positive? Look here. 
we said di will be positive the reason for that is it is going to be a real image how is it that i'm getting a negative di i should have got a positive di right so you should always stop and check the validity of your answer before just moving on okay because now here you can clearly see you have an indication that you have made a mistake right there has been a mistake in the calculation because I got negative di. I should get positive di because it's a real image. So what is what is going on? So take a look. Pause the video, okay, and then try to find out the mistake. Okay, so now we did say that the magnification is going to be negative, didn't we? Because the image is inverted, right? But then we did not assign the negative here. And that's why you're getting a negative di. So this should be a negative 2, right? And in that case then, okay, here's where we went wrong. Uh, in that case, um, I would have negative di equals, now negative 2 times 40 centimeters is going to be negative 80 centimeters right now I multiply both sides of the equation with negative 1 and a negative 1 but I don't need to write the negative negative times negative is positive so di is equal to negative times negative is positive 80 centimeters and now I see that my di is positive right so always stop to check the validity of your answer okay so we did part a um 80 centimeters is my answer part b what is the focal length of this lens okay so that's my second unknown focal length now that i know do i know di i can use my thin lens equation 1 over f is equal to 1 over do plus 1 over di to figure out my focal length okay now remember that do is never negative uh, so 1 over 40 wasn't that my do let me just double check yeah 40 and di is also positive because it is a real image uh, so 80 centimeters okay now the rest of the solution is just the same like we did mirror problems i'm going to multiply this by two multiply this by two to make a common denominator and so two one times two is two 40 times two is 80 plus i have this one over 80. now that i have a common denominator it becomes very easy to add the fractions you just keep the denominator and then do 2 plus 1 and so this is 3 over 80 and remember this is still 1 over f so you have to reciprocate and therefore reciprocate this one as well so f over 1 is f will become 80 divide that by 3 and so i do that 80 divide by 3 and that is 26.66 six and it's recurrent so this can be rounded to and i'm approximating so squiggly equals sign uh, 26.7 centimeters okay i did get a positive focal length so stop check the validity should i be getting a positive focal length yes because it is a converging lens and if i check that is my answer okay part c if the image is six centimeters tall how tall is the original object okay um, so um, for part C the image is how much was it uh, six centimeters tall how tall was the object is the question okay now we know that the image was twice as as tall as the object right that was already given to us and so 
we can use that magnification factor. Magnification is going to be negative 2. Now hi, what about hi? We said that will be negative because the image is inverted, right? So the image is going to be negative 6. Now we have m equals hi over ho, right? So multiplying both sides of the equation with ho because we are trying to isolate for ho so cancel cancel so i have ho uh, m times ho equals hi and now i divide both sides by m divide by m so i can get rid of the m so height of the object is equal to height of the image divided by the magnification now height of the image is six sorry negative six centimeters divide that by the magnification that was negative two so negative negative cancels two goes into six three times and the centimeters stays and so ho is equal to three centimeters which is um, which is my answer right here.